Okay, um, well, I suppose for those of you who aren't from the immediate area, let me be, let me be probably the last person to welcome you to Sunderland. Um, I hope you've had a great weekend. Um, very difficult talk for me, to be honest, to, to, uh, to give to you guys, because in, in real life, I'm actually a corporate IT project manager. Um, I don't work full-time um, in Drupal. And usually when I give a presentation, I know my audience. Um, and of course, in this particular case, I don't really know um, the level that you guys are working at. Um, we've seen some presentations today from James, which have been, you know, James and Jennifer, that have been right at the top of the, the technical level. Um, I'm going to lower the bar quite a lot in this presentation. What about that? So I was going to say, if you understood James, you might want to go to the other session. <laughs> if, if, like me, that was just, wow, you know, entities and extending object-orientated classes <clears throat> upon me. Um, if that was a bit over the top for you guys, um, hopefully there's some ideas here for how to develop your Drupal skills. Um, I'm going to try and do it as a sort of case study um, about how I got into it. Um, how I work my way up to where I am now, which is confident, you know, improving all the time, um, but certainly somewhere below, I guess, the Jennies and the, and the James still. Um, this is this is my journey. Um, I said I was a, you know, have a full time job. I don't work in Drupal, so Drupal for me is a kind of a sort of a casual obsession, a you know, sort of secret life, if you, if you, if you will. Um, um, that first picture is my tennis club, um, and um, I love playing tennis. And I wanted to play more, and I wanted to set up a ladder um, in my tennis club. Now, I'll gloss over my attempts to do it in the real world, because it just didn't go well. Um, and so I figured, well, look, I'm, you know, I'm a corporate IT project manager. I manage multi-million pound IT projects. How hard could it be to put this on the web for my tennis club? And one of the very first things I found when I Googled um, was the tournament module in Drupal. Didn't even know Drupal at that point. Um, and it just was basically, I thought, fantastic. Problem solved. I'll get this sorted out over the weekend. And um, I'll be able to tell the guys on Monday. So, you know, press the download button um, on, the, on the zip file rather than the tar file, because I'm a PC man and that sort of thing. And then realized that you had to download Drupal as well. So I thought, I'll download Drupal, download tournament put the two together. So I'll have it sorted by Monday. Um, and I found that book on, I don't know if it's still there, but it was a, a free PDF download on Drupal.org, um, which I started to read to try and understand how to put the whole thing together. Well, I mean, you know, all you guys in here will, will understand that um, that wasn't going to be the end of the story, was it? The, the website was not going to be there on, on Monday morning. Um, I think if you have found that book and you have had a look at it, you'll realize that the guy who wrote it actually posted a load of videos um, of worked examples that he presents throughout the book. So I started to work through those. You go to the site, you'll find that actually he's posted hundreds of videos um, on the Node 1 site. It's been renamed now, but it, it's, it's basically still there. Um, and I spent a happy few weeks sitting there in the evenings when I got home from work just, just watching videos. You know, watching videos of rules, of views, of nodes and all the basic starting points, I guess, until I got to what I would put on his scale, that, that, that test, his scale there is probably just below average in terms of understanding configuration and that sort of thing. And I suppose that's when, because there's more, it dawned on me, um, and I went back to the tournament module and had a look at it and now understanding a little bit more about Drupal and configuration and that sort of thing, that it began to dawn me that I was nowhere near, nowhere near wanting to actually do what I wanted to do with, with, the, with, with, the, with the code. Um, and the only way forward for me, um, fortunately with an IT background, was to start getting into developing, start to understand how this code was put together, to understand how Drupal was put together, so that I can understand whether it was the right answer. I, I'd sort of decided it was, to be honest with you, but. I still needed to understand. So I picked up the PHP manual, that one actually of the front cover of the manual, read it, and then opened up the code. 10,000 lines of PHP, um, and started to read it. 
Uh, if only, of course, it had been 10,000 lines of PHP, that would have been fine. But of course, it wasn't. It was headlines of PHP, PHP, followed by a hook. And another 10 lines of PHP, followed by a hook. Um, and so I had to stop every 10 lines and go away. And, you know, go over to the Drupal site, and figure out what that hook was doing, come back, another 10 lines. This went on. Um, but I got through it, and I understood it, at least conceptually, anyway, the first time. Um, and then two things happened, um, which really kind of helped and made things 10 times worse. Um, first one was I discovered that there was a Drupal Northeast. Um, and Adam's guys, and the guys who've been putting this on here for us this, this, this weekend, together with the guys from Leeds and Manchester. Um, and that was fantastic, because I finally had someone to talk to. Until then, it had just been me and my study, and my secret life, um, trying to figure out how, how Drupal worked. And that was a huge positive. Um, I was able to go and actually talk to people about what I was trying to do. Uh, and the second thing was I discovered organic groups, um, which, in hindsight, I almost wish I hadn't. Um, and it occurred to me that I'd put, I could actually build a generic site, not just a site for my tennis club, but a site for any tennis club. And this is it. This is where I've got to. This is my elevator pitch um, for my site club in the cloud. Um, a site for grassroots, any grassroots um, racket club, so badminton, table tennis, squash, figure, it, all of those are more or less the same. Um, and there are only sites out there, which, as you would expect, there are sites out there which actually do this, but I'm going to do it my way mode, and I want to do it um, the way I think it should be done. And I had a look at these other sites and decided that, no, no, I was still going to do it. Um, and um, I'm going to build a better mouse trap. Uh, and when, it, when I was working through, through this presentation, I, some things started to sort of come back to me that I'd read a long, long time ago. And there's a number of quotes here from this presentation. And one of them um, at the bottom there, from Cathedral and the Bazaar. I don't know, who's, who's, who's read the Cathedral and the Bazaar? Yeah? yeah anybody over 40? Um, well, some of the stuff in that book started to come, come back to me as I was uh, working through that. So that's one of the classic quotes um, from, the, from the cathedral and, and, and the bazaar. And this, is, this, this, this is my personal itch. So this is what I am going to do. Um, and here's the, here's the site map. This is how it's kind of panned out um, when I finally got a, decided to write it down. Um, uses core, of course. Um, uses the tournament module, um, which... If you look at it instantly, you think, hey, this is it. Simon's right. All you've got to do is download and install it. But in fact, unfortunately, it wasn't that simple. Um, it was written to do tournaments, to do ladders, the things I want to do. But it was written for the gaming industry. If you actually check out the site that it was written for, it's for guys who want to do kind of Battlefield 4, you know, team versus team, and then re record the, the, the scores. I mean, the, the concept of a ladder, the concept of a competition, it's all there. There's a nice state model already defined. But all the terminology is wrong. Some of the ways in which it, it goes about building a team, for example, teams don't play tennis, you know, um, is, needs to be, re be rewritten. So I've sort of taken on uh, rewriting the tournament module. Um, Adam's, Adam, incidentally, Adam's first view was, oh, well, couldn't you just kind of, you know, um, extend it and then feed it back as, as you know, amendments to the uh, module? Unfortunately, I, I've now mangled it so badly that I've had to really just take ownership of the code. <laughs> um, but uh, never mind. Um, so there's organic groups in there um, to create the club concept. Um, real names, because people who play tennis are like me. And we don't like avatars. We don't like user names. We like to be known by Simon Nichols, John Smith, and that sort of thing. So there's no point in the site trying to call you your user ID. It all needs to be real world for, for these people. And, and views, heavily, heavily, heavy use of views. And a few other things, like login to login as well. But, these are, the, uh, these are the main modules. So some, some, pretty, some pretty meaty uh, modules for a guy who doesn't know anything about Drupal. Um, so, you know, th there'll be moments. <laughs> there'll be moments, especially trying to figure out how organic groups works at the code level. You're coding it, not just using the GUI. Um, views, there's some, some implementation, especially organic implementation of views. Um, I've suddenly I've come away at night achieving nothing. You know, thinking, well, that's, that's another evening I, uh, I missed the kids going to bed. Um, not to be able to do a view was the thing I wanted. Um, and I 
pulled this off of people's site as well. You know, if you look at the set of skills, the set of um, I think it's the, the skill tree or one of the representations of the, of the skill trees. It's 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 a enterprise level um, web framework. You know, there are an awful lot of things. You don't necessarily need all of them clearly for every for every website, but there are an awful lot of skills that you have to master um, to start to understand what you can do in Drupal. Um, and I'm being, I'm, I'm slightly exaggerating. I do I do know how to do more than one thing on that on that tree. Um, but I don't know how to do all of them by any means. Um, I, I challenge anybody to say that they knew how to do everything. But clearly, you know, uh, as time goes on, um, you're going you're gonna to meet and overcome more and more, more of, those, of those challenges. But I'm told it gets worse. So <laughs> I should be thankful I'm doing Drupal 7 rather than Drupal 8. Uh, I found that on uh, Google Images, by the way. I was just, I was actually looking for skill trees and learning curves, but I saw that and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself but pull, but pull down a copy. I think that's hilarious. Uh, so full, full, full marks to, to Maris for, for, for coming up with that one. If you look carefully, those of you who haven't seen it before, some of you may have, it's the Drupal eyes as well, so it's not just the infinity set. Um, I thought what we try and do, or what I'd try and do for the, and aiming more at the junior developer and the, the you know, the sort of, perhaps getting on to the intermediate developer, is try and look back on 15, 18 months worth of, of going through that and just trying to pull out some, 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 some lessons um, and try and play them back to you, to you guys, to see if, you know, if they chime with the more experienced guys, maybe, uh, and maybe for those guys who are still trying to climb the, the actual skill curve, um, whether it might help you guys, give you guys some ideas of, of how to go about getting better at, at Drupal, learning things, where you go when you're stuck. Things like that. So I'm good. You know, there's that's the that's the case study. That's so that's how I got here. Let's try and figure out um, what I learned on the way. I thought that might be useful. So um, obviously I'm from a corporate background, so I have to have a disclaimer. So there, <laughs> so there, there we go. Um, those of you who haven't read the uh, um, article or, or heard the sunscreen uh, song, I, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, it's great advice, especially about the knees. Um, so here are my five steps to happiness. Um, obviously, as we're all developers here, uh, no self-respecting developer would start a list at one. Um, so, <laughs> so there has to be six. Um, the, the, the top one's a throwaway. It's a development environment. I think uh, the obvious thing is don't try and do it in Notepad. Uh, there are some great links in Drupal. I'm not going to expand on it any, any further. I, I just went, I found the relevant pages in Drupal and downloaded uh, NetBeans and um, X XED bug uh, and that sort of thing, and uh, I find that extremely useful. I can't believe, you know, when I developed code, it really was usually in a, um, a, a very simple, simple uh, editor. And uh, the fact they give this stuff away for free these days just uh, astounds me. I find that incredible. Um, the other five, though, let's 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 have a look at the other five. Okay, you can't really talk about developing Drupal without talking about hooks, um, and that's just the URL to the the hooks page where it lists all the um, Drupal 7 hooks, and there's about 250 of them, or something like that, I think, on that page. Um, so obviously your first step has to be to, to, be to read all those. Um, it's a great reference, though. It's a great reference, and I think it's a page you can kind of come back to and go, how many of those have I met? How many of those have I actually used? And that sort of thing at various points in your career. And maybe just, you know, um, have a quick browse, browse down it to see if there's one or two interesting ones that, uh, hey, there's hook enable. I wonder what hook enable does. Actually, what I found just the other day, to be honest, you know, um, and obviously you can't really do any significant development in Drupal unless you understand hooks and how hooks work and fit in. And again, there's some great documentation to explain that. And um, as we go through the, the the next three or four examples, uh, I think that kind of builds builds into the whole idea about um, how to get experience. So if we go to the next one, the next one is study the code. My suggestion is that. You're not going to get really good at developing unless you read a lot of code. Read a lot of good code by other people. Understand it. Try and work out what they're, what they're doing. If you want a suggestion for a start, download the real names module. Again, that's my opinion. It's a simple module, quite well written. Um, it actually has a lot of hooks into the system, as you would expect, because it changes core to, to present you know, your, um, your preferred 
um, name as opposed to the, the systems development name. So it's going in there and it's changing a little bit of the, the core, not, not a huge amount, doing it in a relatively simple way. Um, and it's a nice compact module you can actually probably get through in a day and that sort of thing. Um, as you develop, you know, um, perhaps you want to pick up some more challenging ones, but if you just want somewhere to start, my opinion would be download the real names module and try and understand it. Um, php.net, um, the Drupal API site, of course, and Drupal config. Um, I use all those an awful lot. Uh, and those are all fantastic. But you're not going to really start to get an appreciation of how to write code unless you read good code from other people. That would be my, my suggestion. Um, field code. It's open source. Wow. It's all there. It's even if you don't even have to open the, the, the core files. It's actually all there on the site if you want it. Um, incredible. I mean, I just come across pieces of code sometimes and just step back and go, God, is it that easy? And all I have to do is to just take that, you know, and, and change it. This is a piece of code from the um, Organic Groups UI. Uh, those of you who have used Organic Groups, um, or if you haven't, there's an admin page. It's a, it's a big view. Uh, it uses um, VBO. And from that one page, you can control the whole membership of the group. Uh, you can give people roles. Uh, you can put them into blocked. You can delete them. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's got a header. It's a very significant view. Uh, it's a great view to look at if you understand the views. Um, and uh, it's not called through a page. Um, it's actually just a, a view which they embed in um, four lines, four or five lines of uh, Drupal, and then call it through a menu, a specific menu uh, item, and up pops that page. So if you want to write a page, and you don't want to use one of the standard node-generated pages, you just want to write a page, well, hey, there's, there, there's a template. In fact, it gets easier. It turns out that three or four of those lines are a hack. Um, and actually, what you, all you need to do is call the function below, the user bed view. So actually, you can do a page in two lines. Um, so it's just a simple example. Um, of by reading other people's code, you can find out how to do something really cool really quickly um, for yourself. Fantastic. Um, another great quote here um, from the Cathedral of the Bazaar Good programmers know what to write, and great ones know what to rewrite and reuse. Um, I doubt that's news to you guys, obviously, sitting here in a Drupal open source in an environment. Um, but I just thought a great example there. And then I sort of came, and came across it as I was flicking through the overview. I was flicking through it for a reason, I should say. I wasn't just doing it because I was bored and I had three hours to myself and thought, uh, Game of Thrones, you know, organic group UI. Um, I was actually, I actually need to change it. I need to, because it talks about groups. And I don't have groups, I have clubs. So I'm busy working my way through the organic groups UI to, to figure out how to represent the UI. So it talks about members and clubs. And not, and not groups and things like that. And it's a bit of a challenge, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. What I actually did was I just I replicated that page. I just changed the menu item, so it went to my page. And my page was exactly the same as that. I just duplicated the view where he put groups, I put members. Uh, sorry, clubs. Um, so, you know, um, there was a reason, there was a need, but I came across this and just thought, how cool is that? Um, Getting deeper and deeper. Um, I don't know how, how many of you um, have, have done this one. Um, Module.test. And again, the example I'm coming back to is organic groups because it's, it's something I've had to understand to, to actually write a, a code to interface to it. And most of the big modules have the, have the .test file. Um, it's a great way to look and see how the designer, how the developer has used the APIs. So OG presents you with about 50 um, APIs. It doesn't really explain how they work. You know, um, you've got to kind of work that out for, you, for yourself. But if you look in og.test, they build a lot of test cases. They show you exactly how they call them to prove the principles of the organic groups module. So you can go in there, and there we go. Five lines, how to add OG to an entity and create an instance, an entity type, and create an instance of that entity in code, not in the UI, not through the Drupal screens in your module. If you have custom entities or you just want to 
save the bother of setting it up in the UI and you just want to bang it into a few lines of code and stick it into hook enable so that it does it when you enable the module. Something like that. It's really cool. Save you having to deal with all the configuration when you're creating a new website or something like that. Um, and of course it works because it's debugged. Um, so you can, you know, confident, confident use demonstration of how to use the... Uh, so I've used... I've used um, module dot, dot test a lot in terms of going through trying to get my head around um, how organic groups works um, and then the final one um, is how many of you have gone to a modules install file and just sat down and wrote the schema out yeah what do you mean <laughs> you haven't <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a great quote there again from um, Eric Redman, um, show me your code, I'll, I'll praise you. Show me your code, I don't know. Show me your data structures, I understand everything. Okay. So this is where you store the data. Okay. Um, so I know I said read the code. <laughs> so I'm contradicting myself. Um, but if you don't get it, if you don't get the code, and frankly, I've bounced off at organic groups a couple of times by trying to read modules. Um, I've had some success now in the peripheral areas around the UI and that sort of thing, but you go into some of the core code, uh, the field API and that sort of thing, it gets pretty intense. You know, you're getting these associative arrays sort of six deep and that sort of thing, and you're sitting there going, oh, <laughs> you know, switch off game throw. Um, but if you look at the schema for organic groups, it's only got five tables. Okay. Three of them top three are actually to do with users and permissions and roles. It's a, um, they've just reproduced the Drupal core um, concept of permissions and roles in a, in a group setting. So there you go, there's three of the five tables. that have actually nothing to do with organic groups. They're to do with managing the user permissions to use um, features in an organic group. So actually organic group comes down to two tables. And one of the tables defines membership types. And then there's that table there, OG membership, which is where it all lives. And that's the, and if you read anything on organic groups, you'll hear this um, term membership entities, and it's called membership entities. You place that table into the membership entities. So organic group groups comes down to a bunch of permissions and the OG membership table. And then you can look at the fields, and you can see what it, what it, what it stores. It's just usually stores a reference to the content, um, which is the membership item, and it stores a reference to the group, because that membership item is a group of. Um, and then you go back to the code, or you go back to the API, um, and all of a sudden you began to see, begin to see how the, the APIs actually fit, uh, and what it's trying to do. And some of the documentation sparse that it maybe begins to make a bit more sense because you're referencing it back to the, to the, to the table that it's actually uh, storing the information. And it's not instant, of course. You know, it builds up. Um, but it's surprising how, if you, you know, if you go to real names, for example, I think there's one table. You know, it's not hard to work out how real, real names works when there's one table. Um, so, again, back to Eric Raymond, who... That book must be 30 years old, or something like that. But all the answers are actually there. Um, so to summarize, um, I'm going to hand over to Albert here. Um, and Albert came up with this one. Um, and I think, I think it's a fantastic quote, just in, 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 in its own right. Spend the first 55 minutes determining the question. Then the answer will be obvious. That was him. Um, so I've made a slight... I'm sure if he was working in Drupal, uh, he, would have, he wouldn't have said that. He would have said this. Uh, if I had an hour to create a Drupal website, and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper code to use. Once I knew the proper hooks and modules, I could build that website. <laughs> and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you.
any questions or indeed observations? Anybody want to kind of feedback anything? You know, I can't believe you didn't say this one, for example, anything like that. And if that batter's 55 minutes, you know, you go and do the research, go and do the background. When it comes to sitting down at the problem, you go, right, now I know, you know, the constraints and how, how things work. I know how I must attack this problem. I'm not going to waste time going and pretending I can go this way. I know I have to go that way. I think it's that, it's that certainty of how you, how you need to attack the problem. It gives you that, you know, doing the background gives you that knowledge to sort of, you know, go, right, okay, I know how to attack this. Yes, I I think the um, learnings you had through that process of onboarding the robot. Yeah. Um, were there any lessons that you learned through doing stuff the wrong way and wasting a bunch of time? Um, like, could it have gone? Um, that's a good example. Um, I, you know, I've, I've distilled these, I suppose, and presented them as if, um, oh, you know, here we are, this is what I learned. Um, yeah, it was it was a sort of sawtooth process, if, if you like. I spent an awful long time reading the code and banging my head against the uh, code, um, both in the tournament module initially, um, and, and 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 OG to a certain extent. Once I decided to try and, and, and use it, and it, I did have to take a bit of a step back um, on the tournament module itself. I read the code a few times, and you know, looking at the hooks and things like that, um, and I, I still couldn't get some of the logic. And I wasted an awful long time just kind of reading it. Oh, come on, what's this? <coughs> um, and then one day I sat down and I wrote the state model out on a PowerPoint slide. You know, because um, a tournament basically revolves around a, a match. You challenge someone, they say yes or no. You fix a date. You can change the date. Yet you actually play the match. You come back. You enter the score. Um, they confirm the score. The match is finished. So there's actually a little state model. Although it didn't say, no, the code did it say here is a state model. <laughs> there is a little state model. And the day I sat down and wrote that PowerPoint slide out with just the boxes and the arrows and the changes of state was the day I actually cracked the, the, uh, the module. But you know, if I'd done that on day one, I'd have saved myself an awful lot of time. But I think probably if, I, if, I, if I'd adapted some, adopted some of these principles on day one, I'd have saved myself a lot of time. I had to re-remember all those quotes from the Cathedral and the Bazaar. In fact, it was only really when I was putting this presentation together that I suddenly realized what I was saying you know, had been said before in this, in this book that be fair, I had read, so I should have known better. Just a quick follow-up question. Um, by attending your current modules, uh, by attending the local modules pieces, mm -hmm. did you ever get like useful advice by presenting your problem to them? Um, and through chatting, basically, you know, um, I think um, I've got some very, very practical advice about some practical help. Um, I've talked about PHP and talked about sort of schemas and that sort of thing because that's where I live and that's what I do. I didn't design that. Um, some of Adam's guys designed that. So in a very practical way, Adam's guys are actually helping me put the website together, certainly in terms of the creative side and the look and feel and CSS and all that sort of thing. So there's a very positive thing that they're helping me with. Um, talking to some of the developers about what I was trying to do. Um, we've talked about you know in, in integrating real names. I started off by actually just hacking the, um, the um, hook, not hacking, sorry, writing a hook um, to actually change the um, user ID into, in, into a name. And it was the guys who were saying, well, why don't we use a real name? You know, it's all there, it, it manages itself, it, can, it manages a few, a few race conditions and things like that, and they've sorted all this out. Um, so I got advice uh, in terms of uh, modules and their experience from chatting to them, and directly, I, I, um, I, I you know, managed to uh, employ these guys to help me do those bits of that enormous skill tree that I just you know, wasn't going to tackle. And what, you know, there's, there's too much work to do within the area I'd, I'd actually set myself anyway. Sorry, yes. Were you able to engage with the people who had developed tournament or okay yeah. groups or whatever? What was the yeah. experience yeah. of doing that? Um, pretty good. It's actually um, pretty actively maintained. I'd say it was like average maintained. They're not on top of it. It hasn't changed for quite quite a long time. 
um, but the guys are still there. Uh, there's a guy from, I think it's Lully, Lully, Lullabot in, in London uh, called Fender, um, who actively maintains it. Um, funny enough, as I've been going through the uh, code, I've found about um, half a dozen bugs. But they're all edge conditions. It doesn't actually affect, you know, 99.9% .9 of the actual thing. So I've managed to, I've fed, I've fed a few of those back. I've got a few more I, I, I need to feed back. And I put myself up as a co-maintainer co of the uh, core, core module because, you know, aside from Fender and maybe the guy who wrote it before him, so I think he's handed it on, I'm probably the most knowledgeable guy on, the, on that set of code. Um, so, so yes, yeah, and it, 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 it is actively maintained and I'm, I'm trying to feed some of those little things, things back. As I say, I think I've mangled it. I, I think it would have been too difficult to integrate with organic groups and to change it the way I wanted it to change it. You know, I completely dismantled the team concept create a, a double uh, idea um, and maybe maybe I should go back at some point and say could I integrate it back in but it just feels like I've now you know um, dragged it over too far to the right to, to ever be able to pull it back into the same project and were you able to get any kind of were they interested in you saying I want to branch this out and sort of fork it I haven't really out? no I mean obviously I've just take, I've taken a, I've taken a a copy of the code at the, at the last major release, and, and I've worked with it. Um, and I've had, a, I've had a chat to Fender about maintaining it and say, I mean, I'm, I'm tailing off. <coughs> we, haven't, we haven't talked about creating a, a branch or even a new project or, or something like, like that. At the moment, I'm just helping you maintain the version that's on um, Drupal. Yeah. Vicky? I was going to say, um, one of the things you You know, got enormous amount out of coming and, and, and chatting to, to people like y y yourself and, and, and James and, and, and the guys. So I think you know, if I had been part of the Drupal community and had access to devs earlier on, it would have accelerated because it has accelerated. As soon as I got involved, it, it accelerated. You know, the sort of process and then that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and actually, I mean, if anybody in the room goes, hey, this is like, would, would like to get involved with this, you know, just let let me know by by all means. There's a ton of work. So, uh, yeah, any, any, anybody, anybody wants to join me would be more than, more than, more than welcome. But, uh, you know, I'll get there. Any, any other questions or indeed sort of comments about sort of picking up Drupal and the learning curve? No? Oh, sorry, yes. Um, what is your uh, version of the uh, NetBeans XE debug, I do everything through that, through that interface. And uh, that's, that's my development environment there and then I and then I push I well I release code out to um, Adam and the guys uh, and they and they maintain a site which which they which they theme up to this and that's our test site. So that's my dev site, that's my test site and then we'll launch. You know, I suspect we'll just do back to that as the live site once we've <laughs> once we've got all the bugs out. Alright, thank you very much.